Thank you for joining this second COVID-19 community update with a focus on the Santa Barbara County area. It has been a busy and eventful two weeks since my first community update, but I hope to piggyback on some of the concepts and information that we already reviewed to give an update on where things stand this week as we enter the month of December. This update will be shorter and focused on the new developments from the past couple of weeks. We'll review three important numbers to keep an eye on when you look at the national, state, and local information, what to really take away. We'll of course spend most of our time looking at exactly where we are this week, including reviewing where we were just a few weeks ago. By really understanding that information and knowing what we know about this virus, its timing, we can get a pretty good sense of where things are heading, particularly thinking about hospital capacity around our region. With so many changes and updates in the past couple of weeks, I'll then summarize the most significant public health guidance and restrictions that apply to many of us as community members. I'll review the status of the first vaccine applications for approval and finish with a few key takeaways for this week. There are so many numbers and figures mentioned in the news reports we see and hear that it's sometimes hard to keep them straight. In my mind, there are three very important numbers or metrics. A metric is simply a number that is measured to help me understand how things are going every day. These numbers include new daily cases, which presuming that a community has good access to testing, as most of the US does now, gives us a good first sign of how severe the epidemic is in a community. For example, as a group of new cases develop symptoms or perhaps learn that they were exposed, they will get a test and this test result will show up in our new daily case count. So again, rising new daily cases is the leading or first signal that a surge is underway. Current hospitalizations usually follows new daily cases by one to two weeks. And so this tells us less about how quickly the epidemic is changing in real time, but of course has its own critical importance when we think about hospital or ICU level capacity, meaning, whether our hospitals are simply capable of caring for the number of patients that are coming in. Remember that current hospitalizations include all patients in a bed. So is a combination of patients that were admitted perhaps in the past 24 hours, but also those who may have been there for many weeks. The average hospital stay at this point in the epidemic is approximately four to five days, although ICU patients are usually in the hospital for much longer. And finally, tragically, we know that approximately 2% of people with this infection in the U.S. will die, usually several weeks after they were exposed to the virus. Deaths are perhaps the most important way that history will measure this pandemic, but it's not a measure that public health actions can affect in real time. Once infections and hospitalizations are surging, we know deaths will follow. Our public health responses must be rooted in the earlier signals, including daily cases and hospitalizations. Before we see the current metrics, let's quickly review what we know about the timing of these numbers and how this applies to Thanksgiving, perhaps the most important question for all of us this week. Please remember that after someone is exposed to the virus, what we call a transmission event, that it will take many days for that person to develop symptoms, then probably another day or two to simply get a test, and then perhaps another one to three days to get the result. If that person is one of up to 10% of people who get severe symptoms, then they will likely need to be admitted to a hospital about a week after their first symptoms, closer to two weeks after they were perhaps exposed to the virus. And if that person is tragically one of the people who lose their lives to this infection, that death will occur one or more weeks in the hospital. And here's the slide that we reviewed at the last community update. So how does all of this apply to Thanksgiving? We can simply follow the same time frame, beginning with Thanksgiving travel, um, or Thanksgiving itself in late November. Those who were exposed in late November will likely start to show symptoms this week or possibly next week. It will then take up to a few days for those people who were exposed to get a test and to get their result. We would therefore expect our case counts, which were already at record highs before any Thanksgiving related transmission started, we would expect those case counts to increase through this week and into next week as a result of Thanksgiving exposures. We wouldn't expect to see an increase in hospital admissions from Thanksgiving related infections until perhaps the second week of December. 
And finally, we would anticipate deaths linked to Thanksgiving-related infections to occur beginning mid-December and extending through the early new year. What does all this mean as we think ahead? We should remember that given how widespread this virus was through our community and the state before Thanksgiving, it is almost a certainty that more transmissions occurred in the last week of November and that we will see an acceleration of cases this month around the country. So let's look at the numbers today. Here we see new national daily cases since the beginning of the epidemic through November 30th. To understand these curves, we have to remember that the past two weeks were also unique with testing. In a positive way, many more tests were done in the lead up to the holiday. However, the four to five day weekend saw a huge drop in testing as clinics were closed and people were celebrating. All this to say, we likely saw a slightly steeper increase right before the holiday. And now the expected dip in recent days as testing decreased. This will almost certainly stabilize and return to ongoing increases through this week as testing resumes and results are reported. Unfortunately, with new daily cases, we crossed the 100,000 a day mark less than a month ago, and we've not looked back. Instead, we anticipate, unfortunately, in the coming week that we will very likely cross the threshold with 200,000 new cases reported in a single day. Perhaps the most important news this week from my perspective is the record-breaking surge of COVID-related hospitalizations. We have far more people in the hospital around the country than ever before with this infection. During the spring and summer surges when certain regions suffered and others didn't, we are now seeing record cases everywhere. And we are seeing that in a breathtaking almost 100,000 people um, are in the hospital today. As we enter pneumonia season, when our hospitals historically see some of their busiest weeks, even without COVID, we are now contending with unprecedented increases in the number of people who are severely ill with this infection. This is straining our hospitals throughout the country and now, as we all know, here in our region. And don't forget, this is a delayed metric. We've not yet seen the effect of Thanksgiving in our hospitalizations. Finally, daily deaths have increased in recent weeks nationally. Like case counts, they dipped briefly as reporting agencies took a break for the holiday, but we hit an ominous count of 2,300 deaths on the day before Thanksgiving. The debate is not whether deaths will increase. We know they will, but rather the experts this week are discussing when we will hit a new daily record and just how bad it will get. Perhaps 3,000 deaths a day, 4,000 higher, we will see. Let's drill down to our own state though, California. Here we see new daily cases from the state's own dashboard. In light blue, we, we have the actual daily case reports and in dark blue, the 14 day average to make the trend slightly easier to follow. But this trend is of course a little delayed looking back 14 days. As many of us are well aware, we have unfortunately seen one to two weeks of record setting daily cases in California, which is very concerning, a hint of what we may be about to see in our hospitals for all the reasons we just discussed. Before we think ahead though, let's look at the number of people actually hospitalized in the state of California now with COVID-19. Our daily hospitalization rates are back to numbers that we saw at the worst of the summer surge, and they are still rising fast. In this graph, you again see both the light blue lines, which are the daily counts in the hospital, and the dark blue 14-day rolling average. When the dark blue line rises, it means that daily counts for the days before were rising even more steeply. Remember this graph when we talk about the new public health measures already in place and what the state told us yesterday may be ahead. And looking at deaths, remember that we expect a delay in reporting over the holiday weekend, so had a lower number of daily deaths yesterday. Despite this, we are clearly and tragically starting to see the rise in deaths again in California over the past several weeks. And so finally, where are we here in Santa Barbara County this week? Just a reminder, you can get a huge amount of information in the Santa Barbara County specific community dashboard, including extensions of all of the following graphics and data. 
as we look at the daily new reported cases in Santa Barbara County since the beginning of the epidemic, we can now clearly see what we started to see just two weeks ago. We are experiencing another significant surge in cases here in our own community. If we look more closely at just the past month, the trend that we started to see in mid-November has clearly continued, with rising cases week over week throughout the month. Looking at deaths in Santa Barbara County for the current surge is a little premature. However, here you can see deaths by week since the beginning of the epidemic. Clearly, a big rise in deaths were related to the summer surge, but deaths have thankfully fallen in recent months. Just remember, we know that numbers will tragically climb again with regards to death in the coming weeks, simply because we have seen our case counts rise so sharply. And finally, let's review perhaps the most important chart for our community today, daily hospitalizations over the past month. Even before we expect to feel any effect from the past two weeks, our hospitalizations had started to rise again due to the subtle but significant increase in cases earlier in November. And again, we are waiting to see the effect of the surge from before the holiday, in addition to the likely superimposed surge from the holiday itself. This is perhaps the chart that worries me the most and has led to some recent sleepless nights. To be clear, our hospitals and systems are excellent throughout Santa Barbara County, and I'm confident that we're providing outstanding care to the patients receiving care today. But I worry about how both quickly the numbers have risen, but also the likely large number of patients who will be diagnosed in this coming week and will eventually need to come into the hospital next week or perhaps the week after. To care for these patients, we will need not just beds, but a healthy and strong healthcare workforce. We must do everything we can to assure that we will have both in these weeks ahead. And in as much as we are able, we simply must try to flatten these curves. If we don't, we simply won't be able to keep up. Let's briefly remember the blueprint for a safer economy metrics and tiers. We spent so much of the fall following this closely, um, starting in purple and aiming for that yellow tier, which of course, in Santa Barbara County, we are yet to reach. Across the state, as many of you know, there has been significant reversal of the tier system, now with, as of Sunday, over 99% of the state's population residing in a purple tier county. For those of you following Santa Barbara County's metrics closely, our case rate is 11.7 now, with a test positivity rate of 3.7, as reported by the state last weekend. For comparison, the state's averages are also continuing to deteriorate at 30 new cases per day per 100,000 residents, and 6.6% of all tests in the state are now positive. There have been several important new public health guidances and restrictions, and I won't spend time going through them all, but here I have a short list of everything from the state's limited stay-at-home order, which went into effect last week, Los Angeles County new safer-at-home order went into effect this week, and of course in Santa Barbara County, um, also health officer orders limiting um, gatherings and really prohibiting them, both large and small, as well as guidance for schools. And then yesterday, we heard very strong language from the state, including this statement from Governor Newsom. If these trends continue, he said, we're going to have to take much more dramatic, arguably drastic actions. So what trends was he referring to in particular? Many of the curves we've already reviewed played a role, but this next slide was his focus. Here we see the current percent of ICU beds that are occupied in the first column. Based on the current rates of change, the state's public health and infectious disease experts are projecting when we will fill our ICUs. And this is the far right column. To really emphasize the point, they also calculated how far above 100% each region will be by Christmas Eve. The results, I think you may find somewhat breathtaking. And for those of you like me who are a little tired, perhaps exhausted, hearing about the next panicky projection or prediction, I would simply point out that the signals are really there this time. The curve has indeed changed, indeed exploded. And I fear that filling many of our state's ICUs is no longer a hypothetical 
or a model prediction, but rather is increasingly likely. Moving on to vaccines, which are really likely to be the cornerstone of our exit strategy from these tough times. Both Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are now under review by the FDA for an emergency use authorization. Both are mRNA vaccines with very good reported efficacy. Other candidate vaccines are well on their way to an EUA application. The CDC's committee, ACIP, is meeting this week to solidify recommendations for who gets top priority and we expect it to include frontline healthcare workers and long-term care residents, including those who live in skilled nursing facilities who have been hit so very hard by deaths related to COVID-19. State and local planning is uh, continuing to be underway for distribution and administration of the vaccine. So let me finish with some final thoughts for this week. The current surge of cases is accelerating across the US and our own region. The impact of this surge on our local hospitalizations and deaths has begun, and we expect it to worsen. Case rates in Santa Barbara County are now consistently well above the purple tier threshold and will likely stay there for at least many weeks. We see anticipated strains on hospital beds, staffing, and this is a considerable concern locally in the weeks ahead. We have very encouraging COVID vaccine news with EUAs anticipated, expected soon. Influenza yet to hit California substantially. And so this is a great week to get an influenza vaccine for yourself and your family if you've not already done so. Do whatever you can to stay out of the clinic, stay out of the hospitals in these coming months. And finally, please do do your part. Um, join me, wear your mask, distance yourself from those not in your household, Rethink your social circles and interactions, and please sincerely stay safe and healthy. Thank you.